Okay. Good afternoon, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am uh, in London. I'm on Marchmont Street. You can see the blue plaque above me. And this was a house inhabited by Percy Bysshe Shelley and uh, his wife, uh, Mary Shelley, nay Godwin. Well, so what else can I tell you about them? Well, Shelley was born in 1792. He came from England and he's from a wealthy uh, landowning family. So they weren't aristocrats, because they had no title as such, they were gentry. And his father um, had owned land in New Jersey, had been very wealthy because of that as well. Anyway, so Shelley, he went to Eton College and later to University College Oxford, just like me in both cases. But um, Shelley was highly unusual, not into um, sports. And there was a great deal of freedom for schoolboys at Eton in those days. Some of their lessons were optional. The education that went on was almost entirely on, on Latin and uh, ancient Greek. Um, and he became a political radical. Bear in mind this is the time of the Napoleonic Wars. Now, some people become disillusioned with uh, revolutionary notions because France had turned into a military dictatorship under Napoleon. A lot of people had retreated into narrow-minded nationalism because the United Kingdom was fighting against France, but not Shelley. And he embraced all the radical causes there were. Uh, you should read some of his tracts, such as A Vindication of a Natural Diet, which is arguing for um, vegetarianism. Anyway, um, he wrote a text entitled The Necessity of Atheism whilst at University College Oxford, or Univ as it's known. And um, this was published anonymously. The authorities suspect it was him. And he was sent down, as the official document says, for refusing uh, to answer questions proposed to him, rather than, we would say, asked to him. So they didn't actually prove it was him. Anyway, his father was furious with Shelley what he'd done. Incidentally, before he'd left school, he wrote a gothic horror novel, Zastrozzi. You should read it. It's very fast moving. And um, he had a big blowout with the proceeds or with his friends. Um, anyway, so he's going to have to sustain himself um, by writing. He moved here to London. He was 19 years old. Um, he uh, uh, decided he wanted to marry a 16 year old. Of course, below the age of 21, people need their parents' permission to marry. So they ran away to Gretna Green, that's the southerly most town in Scotland, where people could marry at 16 even without parental permission. Returning to England, that marriage was legally recognised. So he had a couple of ch children with her with um, Harriet. Um, anyway, um, he then fell in love with somebody else, with Mary Godwin. Her father um, was a, the owner of a prominent coffee house where radicals used to gather, and so Shelley took up with her. His wife was distraught. Uh, he had a child with this, um, with this Mary Godwin, and his uh, wife drowned herself in the serpentine, which then freed Shelley to marry his second wife, with whom he already had a, a baby and was to go on to have more. Shelley's descendants are still living today, some of them in India, for example. So um, the Napoleonic Wars ended in 1815 and the Grand Tour began again. So um, wealthy gentlemen from the British Isles toured France onto Italy. Some of the more adventurous went further to Egypt and indeed the Holy Land, as it was then known. Um, so Shelley and his chums spent most of their time in northern Italy. Um, Coleridge, Lord Byron, uh, and so on, John Keats. Was. But anyway, um, Shelley also composed um, Adonais uh, for his friend John Keats, lamenting his uh, friend's death. So this elegy begins, I weep for Adonais, he is dead. And it goes on for many verses. Well, Shelley went um, out on a boat at Livorno in Italy, Leghorn, some people call it in English, and uh, he drowned in a terrible accident. His body was cremated there on the beach. Um, so what else about him? Then his widow, Mary Shelley, she wrote Frankenstein, uh, which is uh, probably more renowned than any of Shelley's poems, whether it's The Revolt of Islam, Queen Mab, Ozymandias, The Mask of Anarchy, and so forth. There's another place around here they used to live, which is um, just off Soho, um, Poland Street, I think it is. So it's a rather salubrious area now, but bear in mind, um, around 1820, this was more or less the edge of London and was more low-cost housing. They weren't so wealthy at the time. Uh, so that is Shelley, um, a celebrated poet. Many of his verses are utterly outstanding. He's written, written them with meter. Uh, the rhymes are also very alluring. Uh, the imagery is extraordinarily vivid. Uh, a man of incredible uh, creative output. As he said, poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. Uh, he seemed to be a pacifist, a bit impractical at the time. Uh, he believed in all the radical causes going. He wanted Ireland to separate from Great Britain as well. Um, it was um, 
a uh, man of very advanced views. He wanted the abolition of slavery and so on, he wanted to get rid of monarchy. So that is Shelley. I highly recommend that you read many of his verses.